Hi guys, it's Roy from Benadus 3D here again with another Blender video. And in this video, I'll be discussing PBR textures and how to use them in your materials in Blender. So without much more ado, let's get started. Okay, so first things first, what exactly is PBR? Well, PBR stands for Physically Based Rendering. And what that means is it's a method of rendering that uses various textures to control the different aspects of a texture. For example, a color texture, a metalness texture, and a roughness texture, etc. In this video, what I will be talking about mainly is the metallic roughness workflow that Blender uses for its PBR. So let's have a breakdown of each of the textures. And first up, we have our color texture. Now this can have lots of different names like diffuse, base color, color, and many other various names, but they're all pretty much the same thing. It is the base colors of your texture. Usually it's a flat color image, but sometimes you'll find that an ambient occlusion has been overlaid to give it extra shadow and light areas to define ridges and such but as a general rule your base color will be a flat color texture which gives all the rest of the textures the color and next up is the metallic texture now a metallic texture is a grayscale image with white being pure metal and black being dielectric or not metal and all the gray shades in between being different variants Personally, I work on the premise that something's either metallic or it's not. So I tend to work black and white, and that's it. There are occasions where you want to go with the shades in between. Usually if you're trying to define a specific metal type, if you're trying to uh, tweak your texture to look more copper or more gold, you'd use your colour for the colour base of it and then you tweak the, the metallic grayness. But as a general rule, your general metal is either white or black. And our third texture is the roughness map. Now, again, this is a grayscale image where white is rough and black is smooth with all the variants in between. Now it's important with this one to use your variants in between the grayscale because the more you push it into the white, the rougher it gets. The more you push it into the black, the smoother it gets. So depending on what material you want to emulate, shiny plastic, glass, and so forth, you need different variations in the gray scale of the texture. You might come across two other textures, which are basically the same texture. They do the same job, but they do it in a different way. And that will be a smoothness texture and a gloss texture. As I say, they do exactly the same job, but they do it in, the, in a different way. They're actually the inverse of a roughness texture. So a smoothness and a gloss texture will have white as smooth and black as rough. And again, all the variations in between. It depends on the engine and what the engine uses because every engine, they use different variations of PBR. There are standards, but some engines tend to move the goalpost slightly. For example, in Unity, it uses a metallic smoothness workflow where it uses a smoothness instead of roughness. And that leads us on to our final texture, which is the normal map. Now, this is an interesting texture because what it does is it tells the rendering engine which direction light bounces off of the object. And by using this map, you can create fake bumps and grooves in the surface of the object. You could have a completely flat surface, but it looks like... Um, a name has been engraved in it and so on and the way it does this is by packing information for light bouncing into the three color channels of the texture so it actually acts as a grayscale image um, but uses each of the channels the red the green and the blue channel for a different direction with the red channel telling the rendering engine how to bounce light off of the X axis, the green channel telling the engine how to bounce light off of the Y axis, which in the case of this texture is in and out, so height. And in the blue channel, it tells the engine how to bounce light in the Z direction. So this then converts 
into information painting bumps and grooves on a flat surface. Now, there are two variations of this texture. There's the DirectX version, and then there's the OpenGL version. Blender uses the OpenGL version. So does Unity. Unity uses the OpenGL version, but Unreal will use the DirectX version. And there's only one difference between these two versions. They're exactly the same, but the difference being is the green channels inverted. So if you ever come across a normal map texture and you put it into Blender and it looks like the bumps are going in and the grooves are coming out, then you know you've got a DirectX normal map and you can work with that. Okay, so now you know what PBR is and how it works, but how do you use it in Blender? Well, that couldn't be simpler. Blender has a very simple material shading system. And all you need to do is take your object and go to the materials tab, click new to create a new material. And that gives you all of your PBR sliders. Now we could just paint each of these planes a different color and choose our own metallic and, and roughness. The only problem with that is there's no variation. It will be very flat. It will be metal, but it will, there will be no detail to it. So what we want to do is we want to use a shader. And so if we go up to our shading tab up here, it gives us a split screen with a view of our model and down here, the actual shader editor graph where our nodes are. And it will give us a principal BSDF shader. And this again is just a duplicate of what's in the materials. So from this, we could do plain color um, PBR materials quite easily. But what we want to do is we want to add textures to this. And the way we add our PBR textures is to press shift and a if i click on search and type image it will come up with image texture and give us a new node we can then press open and search for our textures and choose the one that we want to load in there but it doesn't show it on the model yet well firstly i'm in the wrong dev view let's go into viewport shading move that around a little bit but it's still not on there because we haven't connected these two nodes together. So we take the color from the, the texture and put it into the base color of the BSDF. And then what that does, it sends it to the material output, which then adds it to the actual object. But as you can see, this is just our color and we've got no metallic, we've got no roughness, we've got no normal detail. So now we need to add the rest of our PBR textures, but I'm not going to do that in the manual mode that I just did it. And I'm gonna delete that because we don't need that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an add-on. Now this add-on comes with Blender and if you've been using Blender for a while and you haven't used this add-on, then shame on you, close down Blender, delete it. You're not worthy. It is the best add-on that is available for free on Blender. And it comes packaged with Blender. It's just not turned on. It's called Node Wrangler. And if we go up to edit and go to preferences and go to our add-ons tab, if we go to the search bar there and type in node, you'll find node wrangler and you just tick the box and close it down. And that will allow you to use the node wrangler. And now what this does, it just makes the workflow so much easier and it does a lot more than just texture stuff, but obviously we're going to use it for our textures. And the most important aspect of this for me for textures is that I can now select my BSDF shader and I can press Control and T and it creates our image texture node, a mapping node and a coordinate node and plugs it up to the correct slot. So I don't have to search for it. I just press a, a, a key button. Now we don't need this either. So let's just delete that. I could also, if I want to uh, bring in my texture folder and go to Metallic Rough, I could actually drag my textures in like so. You can't do that normally. This is part of No Wrangler. So I could just drag them in. Again, cuts down the workflow. But again, I don't need that because this is the method I want to use. I click on the BSDF shader. I press Control, Shift and T and it brings up the file view. So if I go to my textures and I select all of the textures I want to bring in, it adds them to the correct nodes on the BSDF shader, all set up perfectly. And as you can see, if I turn my lighting on in the scene and switch to rendered mode, I now have metal, concrete, plastic, and wood 
and they all look fairly realistic with the correct shading as I say, no Wrangler, brilliant add-on. And to be honest, that basically is it. That is how you bring PBR textures into Blender. There's a couple of things you want to know. If you want to do it manually, then make sure that your metallic, your roughness, and your normal map are set to non-color because they don't use color data, they use non-color data. And the normal map, isn't plugged straight into the normal because if you look you've got a yellow color and a purple normal you can't plug a yellow into a normal so what you need to do is shift and a click on search and type in normal and you'll find normal map click on that and bring that in and then what you do is you link your color to your color and then your normal to your normal and that tells the shader that it's a normal map so anyway that's pretty much it for bringing the basic metal roughness workflow of pbr into blender let's take a look at some other types of pbr okay so let's take a look at unity textures now unity uses a slightly different method of pbr it uses a metallic smoothness so the roughness map in Unity's case is a smoothness map and the black and white color channels are mixed. It also uses packed textures. Now what are packed textures? Basically what you can do, much like the normal map, you can actually use the RGB and alpha channels of a texture to store grayscale images. And with Unity, they use what they call a metallic smoothness map and what that has is the metallic will be in the red channel of the texture and the smoothness map will be pasted into the alpha channel of the texture so let's see how we can put that in to blender okay so we're back in our original scene let's click new to create the material and go to the shading tab and I'll just adjust the screen slightly and put it into rendered okay so we have our principal bstf now we could press Control shift and t and again we'll find our unity textures select them all and click principal texture setup now that's done a pretty good job it's added our base color to our color it's added our normal to a normal map and into our normal but with the metallic smoothness map there's an issue because the metallic smoothness also contains not only the metallic but the smoothness as well but it's only detected it for the metallic which is great which is fine now what we need to do is we need to add the alpha channel into the roughness so then we just grab this little node here and we drag it down into the roughness but that's still not quite right because if you look you can see that our wood is really really shiny and our shiny plastic is really matte so why is this because it's a smoothness map and not a roughness map. So we need to invert this alpha channel. And again, simply press shift A, click search and type in invert. And there we have an invert node. And we just drop that over this line between the alpha channel and the roughness. And that will switch that channel right round. And as you can see, that now gives us the reflectiveness. And if I turn my lighting on, and go to the rendered you can see that's just how it was with the normal metallic roughness workflow and again your normal maps all the same and your plastics all shiny your concrete's all matte and your metal is metallic so that's how you add a unity texture set into blender okay now you know how to use both the metallic roughness standard workflow and the unity pbr workflow in blender before i finish i would like to take a quick moment just to talk about a small app that a friend of mine kevin hampson has just recently released on steam and it's absolutely relevant to this video because it is a texture packer and what does it do it takes your base textures your metallic your roughness uh, your normal maps, your gloss maps, and so on. And it combines them into the different channels within textures. 
absolutely brilliant piece of software such a simple thing but it makes your workflow so much easier when creating textures for things like unity and unreal where you need to pack textures into the channels of other textures so i highly recommend it it's up on the screen at the moment x pack texture packing it's only 10 pound 29 and it will cut down your workflow amazingly so that being that i'd like to thank you all for joining me today i hope you've learned something today if you have please hit that subscribe button please hit that like button share with all your friends it really helps me to grow the channel and if you want to know when i upload the next video hit that notification bell thank you again for joining me and i really hope to see you all in the next video